Sonic. Lab. TV. This is the Korg Micro Korg XL, or rather it's the box for it. The XL takes over from where the original MicroCorg came in, which incidentally was one of the biggest selling synthesizers of all times. The MicroCorg XL adds MMT analog synthesis modeling, which comes from the much higher costing Radius and R3 synthesizers. Additional power is you get eight voices instead of the original four. You also get 17 effect algorithms instead of the original six. And you also get 16 bands of vocoder for a much better vocoder sound. But the really big difference about this synthesizer is it's got a USB port on the back and that gives you access to the MicroCorg XL sound editor, which really does open up the possibilities. So physically, the MicroCorg XL is of a similar size to the original MicroCorg. It's got this kind of retro electric piano styling vibe to it. It's a bit like a Wurlitzer EP200A or a Fender Rhodes suitcase. Um, it's a plasticky box, I won't deny, and it has a sort of tappy quality that you can kind of tell that it's made of plastic, but that's okay. Um, other features worth of note, um, in here you can power the unit by 6AA batteries, so if you want to do the gig on the bus, you can. But let's have a look around the back and see what we've got. So we've got a stereo headphones out, stereo left and right out, all on quarter inch jacks. We've also got a mono line in, and a gain with a switch for a switch between the line in and the XLR in from the microphone. So you can use those as a feed for the vocoder, or you can process external audio. Also got MIDI in and out, which are also available as ports over USB, power and the DC 9 volt wall walk. Also in the box you get this uh, rather stylish XLR gooseneck microphone that slots in the top here. It's a bit of an improvement of the original microcorg. Uh, it comes with a windshield. Uh, power supply, um, it's a standard 9 volt fitting, um, but it's got one of these rather nifty um, multi-territory devices so you get all these various different plug types you can just slot in there so this will work pretty much anywhere in the world. So let's have a look at the front panel on the basic operation of the MicroCorg XL. Starting at the left it's pretty similar to the original MicroCorg. Uh, we've got volume and tempo, we've also got these octave up and down buttons which have nice color-coded indicators to see where you are in the octave range. We then move on to the basic patch selection of the synth, and this is very similar to the original MicroCorg. Um, you have eight genre switches here, and then eight types of sounds here. So eight times eight makes 64 patches, but you also have an AB switch. So for each memory location, you have Two, two patches, very simple. Come on to the LCD, this is a big improvement over the original MicroCorg as it is in fact a multi-character two-line display. The original MicroCorg was only a red LED which was not so hot for seeing what you were doing. There's also a button here to activate the arpeggiator, the vocoder, right patches and also shift and exit. The last section is the edit matrix. Uh, this will be pretty familiar to those of you who know the MicroCorg way of working. Uh, when you start off with a patch, these three knobs are assigned to uh, any parameters that you feel may be uh, the most um, useful in tweaking the sound but if you want to get a bit deeper in you've got this edit matrix which by switching this knob here gives you access to this line of parameters which then correspond to these three. There's also a full edit mode here which allows you to access all the individual pages of parameters but there, to be honest there are so many of them you're really going to get a bit frustrated if you try and do it via the front panel you're far better off using the USB and the audio editor. Uh, this last switch here is timber select. If you're in multi-timber mode or you're working with two separate timbers, uh, flipping this either left or right will select which timber you're currently editing. Easiest way to show you what the architecture is like in the MicroCorg XL is really using the software editor. This is it. Uh, it's a simple download. You don't have to register or anything. Just go to the Korg website and uh, click to download. Mac and PC, very simple. First page is just a list of patches. Um, then you click on the edit button and you get the sort of overview of the patch. The MicroCorg XL operates in four modes. It's got single mode, which is one sound over the entire keyboard. Layer, which is two sounds over the entire keyboard, layered on one top of each other. Uh, split, so you can have one sound on one part of the keyboard, another sound on another part. And multi, which has got two separate timbers, one on uh, each MIDI channel. Let's just take a look at the actual architecture of the synth. Very simply, uh, it's a two oscillator, two filter, 
three envelope, two LFOs, and with a kind of patch matrix here. Really straightforward. Oscillator 1 is the most powerful of the two oscillators. Uh, you get This is a multi-mode oscillator. You've got your four basic analog style waveforms. Uh, each of those have the ability to kind of adjust the PWM of, uh, uh, of the wave, even if it's not a square wave. Uh, you've also got these PCM samples, which add a, a whole bunch of extra kind of Korg wave, tape, wave sample type fare. Now these add, you know, they're kind of workstation type sounds, but they're not really the full Monty when it comes to uh, true core workstation, but they're a welcome addition. Also as a source in oscillator one, you've got audio in, which means either the microphone or the line input on the synth itself can be processed by the filter, the effects, and uh, all those LFOs and stuff. The filter's quite handy as well, because essentially it's two filters in one. Uh, you can route them a number of different ways. You've got single, serial, parallel, individual. Uh, the sound of the filter, let's give you a quick sweep. filter will self oscillate um, but it does step a little bit. Uh, when you go into the dual mode, let's go serial, um, you've got a multi-mode filter for the second one and then you can balance between the two filters using this knob here. This is often assigned on the front panel as well so there's quite a lot of tonal variations. One thing's worth mentioning is you've also got a drive for uh, the amplitude section which gives you all these separate ways of actually sort of increasing the distortion and vibe of the oscillator which is a nice addition. Arpeggiator which is a standard eight step you can switch on steps on and off. Uh, the master effects also very handy uh, you've got two units with these 17 algorithms uh, the editor gives you access to all the parameters and the, the, the effects are pretty good actually they're not too bad at all. <laughs> Overall, I really enjoyed the MicroKorg XL. Um, I'm not sure that it's going to set the world alight in the same way that the original MicroKorg did, but the fact that it's got additional voices and the new MMT synthesis engine is a really big plus. But the biggest advantage for me is the fact that you can hook up the Korg editor and actually graphically edit the sounds in the synth engine. This opens up the possibilities enormously and you can tweak away to your heart's content. In fact, the programmability is actually really quite deep. The only real downside, I think, is the build quality. It is plasticky, as I said earlier. And I think as the microcore, original microcore was used a lot live, some of the, the knobs do feel like they're not gonna maybe stand up to some vigorous pounding uh, if you get carried away during the set. The list price of $750 or 499 UK pounds might seem a bit steep, but bear in mind, you are getting access to Radius and R3 synthesis technology here. However, you're not gonna pay this. Uh, you're gonna find more likely the price being closer to 500 bucks and around 379 UK pounds.